So Jasmine Wahi, um, I'm delighted to welcome from New York, is a curator, activist, founder and co-director of Project for Empty Space. That's a not-for-profit organisation that creates multidisciplinary art exhibitions and programming that encourage social dialogue, education and systemic change through the support of both artists and communities. Now, since February, Jasmine has served as a social justice curator at the Bronx Museum. Jasmine, over to you. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. Um, I'm not sure what I have to say can really follow up adequately what was just said, but um, I'll give it a try. Um, so I'd like to start very briefly with a very short moment of silence, um, even though I know most of us are muted just in the spirit of collaborative effort. Um, so just a moment. And I like to start with a moment of silence, one, because I grew up in the Quaker tradition um, in Washington, D.C., but also because I found it very helpful to just recenter myself, um, and I found it a useful tool for other people to also recenter and reflect. So before I start, I want to take a very quick survey while scrolling through these pages. Um, how many people are familiar, just by a show of hands, with the term intersectionality? Okay, so fair, fair number of people, fantastic. And I always start with this because I want what I say to be legible to everyone. Um, but very, very briefly for those of you who are not familiar with this term, um, it's a term coined in 1989 by Dr. Kimberly Crenshaw, who is a uh, lawyer, advocate, and legal scholar. And the term basically is the idea of multi-layeredness, multi-positionality, and the idea of vertical hierarchies of identities. So again, by a very quick show of hands, how many people identify as female? Okay. How many people identify as white or Caucasian? How many people identify as black? How many people identify as some form of Asian? How many people identify as queer? How many people raise their hand more than once? Okay, so a fair number of people. The point of, of this exercise is essentially to show that most people, and if I kept the list going on, would raise their hands at least twice. Once for whatever they identified as, I'm sorry, at least three times. Um, and at some point to say that they are more than just one thing. So point being, we're all more than just one thing and sometimes these identities that we have work in collusion relative to the community that we are in to work against us as a form of oppression. And so that's where I like to start how I think about everything. And I apologize for my tiny dog barking. Um, so as a social justice curator, it is essential for me to always think in the reality of vertical hierarchies, whereas as a woman of color, I am in some ways disadvantaged in a professional setting, for example, than my white male counterparts. It's simply just a reality. I get paid less, or I have gotten paid less um, than some of my counterparts. I am often far more educated um, and underpaid than some of my white male or white female counterparts. Um, it's a reality of the world we live in. And so how do we change that? And for me, one of the tenets of how to change structural inequity is by changing our frames of reference. One of those being to stop thinking in terms of centricity 
and centering one group of people instead thinking in a multi-centric format. Multi-centric format means we can elevate and are capable of thinking of ways to highlight, elevate, and advocate for more than one group at a time. Because again, when you think intersectional, intersectionally, you are thinking about multiple layers and multiple ideas at one time. We're all capable of thinking this way. So the second part of that is not only thinking multicentrically, oh, I'm talking forever, I'm so sorry, multicentrically, I'll wrap up quickly, but also thinking about visibility within this idea of multicentricity, because the primary tenet of social justice and change for me is being seen, because we cannot know and we cannot make a change without knowing what we are making a change for. So unless you see me in all of my multidimensionality, in all of my oppressions, but also all of my strengths and advantages, you won't be able to see what the issues are that I face or what anyone else faces. So the primary move towards equity is being able to see and not necessarily seeing as as seeing one person, but seeing all of us and all of our elements. Um, as usual, I have so much more to say on this topic, but I think I will end very quickly with a quote that means quite a bit to me um, from the writer Clarissa Brooks. She says, I don't want my body or my back to be the bridge used to build the world I'll never get to see. And to add to that, I don't want my body to be the doormat or the rug that everyone walks across to get to a point of equality. I want it to be the painting on the wall and my voice to be heard. Thank you so much, Jasmine. And there's an immediate question, which I wonder if we could come to, which I think would be really interesting just to hear your view on, which is um, from Subhadas. Would you like to ask your question, Suba? Sorry, I'm just trying to unmute myself. Yeah, hi, um, and thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, hugely inspirational already. Um, I mean, I suppose the challenge within all of this and within those of us who've worked within subsidised organisations in the UK over the past 10 years under austerity, you know, we talk about this desire to create change, to create elevation, to create equality what do we do when we acknowledge that we're doing that in the face of governments that actively oppose mobility, actively oppose justice? What can we do? Right, that's a great question. Um, and I think about this often because, um, as you might be able to tell from my accent, I live under uh, the tyrannical rule of a Cheeto. Um, and, you know, I've gone through an evolution of, of thinking about this. It's constantly changing. Um, where I'm at right now is, to be totally candid, is to um, stand up and fight back. And I think the only way to really achieve true change um, is through what unfortunately is known as radical. Um, radical revolution. Um, I think one day the idea of those of us who are considered radical, particularly within the creative, creative sphere, those of us who think that Black Lives Matter, um, which in the States is still considered by many to be a radical statement, um, I think until the radical becomes regular, we have to push back with every means that we have necessary. Um, you know, we live in countries that are predicated on the idea of oppressing others. And so this is not that our, our nations have evolved into this place over time. It's at their core, it's at their foundation. So when your core is rotten and also metastatic, how do you combat that? And you know, my radical view is you do anything and everything that you can to push back against it, whether 
I'm not advocating for violence, but you know. Um, and I, I guess I have a question in regards to that, Jasmine, which is just mm -hmm. for us in the UK here. Could you tell us a bit about how this role social justice curator came about in the Bronx Museum, considering sure considering that sort of being within the institution sure operating um, from, from that foundation so i should preface that with saying i swore to myself um a long time ago that i would never work for an institution because i think that historically an art institution i should clarify a visual art institution because i think um at their core and historically their spaces of hegemonic um oppressive white supremacy. Um, that's frankly what they were founded on. They were founded to keep certain people in and certain people out and to make um, certain types of art canonical and valuable. Um, I don't believe in a singular canon anymore. Um, but I joined the Bronx Museum simply because that they, they decided to take this position of having a social justice stance and having a viewpoint that if a museum is really as in the 21st century many museums proclaim for the people and for the community it has to actually reflect the constituency of the people it serves and so in this time and place when you're you know trying to dismantle um hegemonic structures, the only way to do that is to see that social justice is needed. Um, and so my role is to really, I think, subvert and counter the historic structure. Um, and I'm doing that really by amplifying the voices and artistic practices that not only reflect the communities that I'm working within, um, but also bring them into the conversation. So my approach as a curator is a democratic approach. Um, I survey the community and I survey um, my partners within the museum to create um, exhibitions that are not necessarily what I alone think that the community should see, um, but what the community is asking to see. And so I guess the shorter answer is social justice does not always mean taking to the streets um, in certain ways, but it also means within the system how we change it and become more inclusive and multi-centric. Yeah, amazing.